Hello everyone. Today we will talk about approximating text-to-pattern hemming distances. My name is Shai Golan, and this is a joint work with Timothy Chan, Tom Skotjumka, Zvi Kopolovic, and Eli Porat. So first of all, let's define what is a hemming distance. So for two strings of the same length, S and S prime, the hemming distance between S and S prime is the number of positions where S and S prime have different characters at the same position. For example, in this slide, the hemming distance between the two strings is 4. In the text-to-pattern version of the problem, we are given a text T of length n and a pattern P of length m, and our goal is to compute for every substring of the text of length m the hemming distance between this substring and the pattern. So, for example, for the first substring of the text of length m, the hemming distance between this substring and the pattern is 2. For the second substring, the hemming distance to the pattern is 4, and we want to compute such hemming distance for every substring of the text of length m. In the approximation version of the problem, we are given an approximation parameter epsilon, and our goal is to compute now for every substring of the text of length m, instead of the exact hemming distance, just a 1 plus minus epsilon approximation of the hemming distance. So let's take a look on previous algorithm for this problem. So the first algorithm for this problem introduced in the early 90s by Karloff, and its running time is epsilon to the minus 2 and log squared n. Then Peter Indyk introduced another approach which achieve a slightly better running time for the decision problem and a little and worse running time for the general problem. Recently, Kopelovic and Porat introduced a new algorithm which achieve a better epsilon dependence and the total running time of the algorithm is epsilon to the minus one and log squared n. The common strategy for all these problems, for all these algorithms, is that they first of all project the alphabet from large uh, alphabet to some small alphabet, and then compute uh, many convolutions using the FFT algorithm, and all these algorithms yield running time of n log squared n in the case that epsilon is a constant. So let's uh, demonstrate this uh, strategy by the algorithm of Kopelovich and Porat. Uh, so the algorithm is uh, pretty simple. First of all, the algorithm project the alphabet to a small word of size uh, 2 over epsilon. Then the algorithm compute the ex exact Hamming distances for the projected strings with the FFT algorithm. And then the claim is that for each offset, the obtained value is in expectation 1 minus epsilon over 2 approximation of the original Hamming distance, which is even better than, uh, than we need. And therefore, by repeating this process theta of log n times, and since the, the error is one-sided, we can take the maximum of, for each position, and with high probability, we achieve a 1 minus epsilon approximation of the Hamming distance. So two questions arise from this strategy. First of all, can we achieve the running time as a function of n from n log squared n to something better? And the second question is, can we avoid the FFT usage and use some other techniques and still get nearly linear time algorithm? And the in the paper and in the stock, we will uh, give answer for both questions, which is positive. Okay, so we describe how to move from FFT to sampling. The intuition is that one can estimate the Hamming distance between two strings just by sample several positions and look on the characters at these positions in S and S prime and count the number of mismatches, and then normalize this number to the uh, whole length of S and S prime. Uh, in order to decide how many positions we need, to, we need to sample, let's reduce the problem for, uh, from estimate the Hamming distance for each position 
to some specific value k, where the goal now is to compute the good estimator just for uh, hemming distances, uh, for positions where the hemming distance is about roughly between k and 2k. And for positions where the hemming distance is much larger than 2k or much smaller than k, we just want to know that this is the case and we don't care about good estimator. And this is a good redu reduction because if we know how to solve, if we have a, sol a solution for uh, for any k, then just uh, run the algorithm for k equals 1 to 4 exponentially growth series from 1 to m, and we will find good estimator for any position in this way. And the intuitive thing to do is just to sample positions with probability about 1 over k, or um, to be more accurate, log n over k, to get a good uh, probabilistic guarantee, and count the number of mismatches, and then normalize. However, this strategy uh, will end up with an uh, algorithm which is running time is too much, and therefore we need some better strategy. In order to develop better strategy, we combine the technique of sampling with fingerprints. So a fingerprint function, f, is a function that maps strings to small, num to small world of integers. Uh, and ha it has the following pro properties. First of all, for two different strings with high probability, their fingerprint will be different. And second, if we have uh, the fingerprint of some string, one can compute in constant time the fingerprint of this string with extra character at the end or without the first character, assuming that we are given the first character in the original string. And thus, we can sample a set uh, of positions from the range m, which is the indices of the pattern. Let's assume this is our sample. And then we can look on the this sample in the pattern and in the text and compare. And instead of comparing each uh, correlated characters, we can compute the fingerprint of each one of the of the positions in the text and in the pattern. And then if we compare the fingerprint of those uh, positions, then we can in constant time decide with a high probability if all the positions that we, uh, that we sample from the text and from the pattern have exactly the same characters, or there exist at least one mismatch between those uh, positions. And again, if we repeat this process log n times, we can use the number of times, or tet of log n times, we can use the number of times where uh, the fingerprints are different to estimate the Hamming distance. This is using standard techniques of median of average, kind of median of averages. And the total running time now is m over k, which is or order m of, over k, which is the size of the sample, times log n per text offset. And we can do it for any text offset uh, separately. Of course, we don't need to repeat this process in the pattern. And at the end, we achieve an algorithm which is running time is still too much. It actually the same running time as the too simple solution we saw earlier. Thus, in order to improve the running time, let us introduce the notion of structured sampling. For this notion, let p be a random prime number, which is theta of k log n. And let b be a random subset of the range p, the range 0 to p minus 1, of size theta of p over k. Now, let us define R, the set of sampled position, instead of uniformly at random as in the previous solution, let's define it based on B, 
let's define it as all the position j, all the positions, the positions j, which their uh, value mod p is in the set b. So now r is not uniformly random, it's not uh, completely random, it has some structure. However, the important thing for us is that r is still sufficiently random for our uh, goal, for estimating, estimating Hamming distances. So now let's repeat the same idea which we saw in the previous solution. We sample the uh, positions of r from t and the positions of r from p, and everything look, looks like uh, the previous solution. We compute the fingerprint of uh, every set of positions, and so far everything is, is the same. However, the advantage of this technique is that when we shift the pattern by p positions, which is when we compute the uh, when we compute the fingerprint of the positions in the text, which are not in the first p shifts, not in the first p positions, but after that, then we can look on any position as the position which is p positions before plus p. And the good thing about this, uh, this uh, position of view is that now, instead of computing the fingerprint of the positions in the text from scratch, in time which is linear of, in the size of r, which is m over k, we can just remove the first positions, the first p over k positions, which is the size of b. And uh, just to remind you, the, our fingerprint function uh, support in constant time removing any given a character from the beginning, and after that, in constant time per sampled position, uh, we add the positions in the suffix of the substring of p. And in total, this shift by p position costs us, costs us just p over k, which is order of log n, time instead of uh, order of r, which is order m over k, which we uh, pay in the uh, previous solution. So now, the running time for the first p position is bad as before, is p times m over k times log m, but since p is small, is k of, k of k log n, we just pay for this stage m order of m log squared n, and for any other position we just pay order of log squared n time, and and in total, we pay n times log squared n time. And I just remind you that we are focused on specific given k, uh, that we reduce the or original problem to this value of k. Now, let's look on another way to use the structured set R. So again, we construct the set R. And for the first position in T, we do exactly the same. However, now when we move, uh, we slide in T, instead of computing the sample from T again, we use exactly the same position, except that we may remove the first one if we sample the first position as, and it's not uh, currently in the uh, positions in the substring, and we maybe add a new sampled position at the end, but not more than one at each endpoint. And instead, we sample different positions from P. So look that at the beginning, the position from P uh, contained the first position, and now it starts from the second position, and from the second position of P. And again, we compute the we compute the fingerprint of these sampled positions from B, and so on and so forth. We compute shifts, cyclic shifts of R in P, and for each cyclic shift, we compute the fingerprint of the sampled positions. So in total, we compute P different values of uh, P different samples from uh, the pattern. And 
And now the running time for computing all the shifts in the pattern is uh, in total m times log squared n. And for the first sample from the text, we have to pay m over k times log n. And for any offset, we just need to remove at most one sample position and insert at most one sample position. And since we, com we repeat everything log n times, we just pay order of log n time per offset in the text. And in total, we pay order of n times log squared n time, assuming that m and n are in the same uh, magnitude of order. Uh, and this is another way to achieve a solution for the reduced uh, problem for specific k in time n log squared k n, which is exactly the same time we achieve for the previous solution, which uh, use offsets in the text and just one offset, one shift in the pattern. Finally, in order to achieve a better running time, we combine the last two algorithms. So if in the last algorithm we take p shifts from the pattern, and in the algorithm before we take one shift from the pattern and p shifts from the text, now we take just square root of p shifts from each one of the string, from the pattern and from the text. So from the pattern, we take sequence of shifts, namely from zero to square root of p, any shifts, any shift in this sequence. And for the text, we take another square root p shifts, which are the shifts which they are uh, integer multiplication of square root p. And taking these shifts guarantees us that for each offset of the pattern in the text, for each substring of the text of length m, we can find a pair, and we can compute a pair of pattern shift and text shift that we already uh, computed. And they, they're together uh, gives us good sample from this substring. And Thus, for using this technique for a given k, recall that we reduce the problem for a specific k, then for any k that we reduce the problem to, uh, the running time we achieve is order of n times log to the 1.5 n over square root k. Since we compute the problem, we solve the problem for any k between 1 to m in an exponential series, for k equals 1, 2, 3, uh, 1, 2, 4, uh, up to m, the total running time uh, we achieve is n times log to the 1.5 of n, which is an improvement over previous algorithm. And uh, we didn't use uh, FFT, so we solve, we answer both questions that we stated at the beginning. So, to the end of this talk, I just want to mention several results that we achieve from this technique combining with other techniques. So, we introduce a truly linear time approximating approximation algorithm, which uh, its running time is O of epsilon to the minus 2 times n without any log n uh, overhead which we achieve by using uh, bit techniques. And uh, we also introduce an exact, an exact hemming distance uh, algorithm with a, up to a threshold k, which improves uh, upon the state-of-the-art algorithm of uh, Gavrochowski and Uznanski by uh, log factors. We introduce also an approximation algorithm with better dependency on epsilon, if we care about the, the epsilon dependency and not about the logs, which its running time is O tilde of n for uh, patterns which are large enough, which are uh, which their length is at least epsilon to the minus c for some constant c. And we also introduce sublinear time algorithm uh, for large k and uh, constant epsilon, which can uh, 
to report all the occurrences of the pattern in the text which their hemming distance or all the substance of the text which the hemming distance from the pattern is at most k, and uh, we also develop a property tester for pattern matching that can decide with high probability if the pattern uh, appears in the text or if any substring in the pattern is uh, has large distance from uh, the pattern in the uh, hemming distance map. Uh, at the end, we also develop a streaming algorithm for approximate hemming distance up to some threshold k, uh, which its space usage is O tilde of epsilon to the minus 2 uh, times square root k, or for large k, is epsilon to the minus 1.5 times square root m. And the running time of this algorithm per character is O tilde of epsilon to the minus 3. And that, that's it. Thank you for listening. And see you. Bye-bye.